In this video I'm going to be showing you a low cost Hackintosh with a dedicated graphics card, NVMe SSD and running the latest macOS Sonoma that cost me less than 60 euros or around 63 US dollars. This Hackintosh is based around a Fujitsu P420 with a quad core Intel Core i5 4570 CPU, 240GB Kingston SSD and 8GB of DDR3 RAM. I put this together in a previous video for a total cost of 16 euros and it runs macOS Ventura perfectly well with performance comparable to a 2020 Intel MacBook. But I wanted to run macOS Sonoma and improve the performance in 4K video editing which was slow due to the integrated HD4600 graphics. First I wanted to add an NVMe SSD that could be used as a second drive for booting Windows or as an editing drive. Since this PC has no NVMe slots I needed to buy an M2 to PCI Express adapter. I picked this one up on Amazon for 10 euros. For the SSD I went with a Patriot P300. I've used this drive before in a previous Hackintosh build so I know that it works well in macOS. And it's also one of the best value NVMe SSDs out there at just 19 euros for the 256 gigabyte version. After installing the SSD onto the PCI Express card it can be installed into one of the two single lane PCI Express slots on the motherboard. Next I needed to buy a GPU. MacOS Sonoma is compatible with Polaris and Navi cards. The cheapest card that's still natively supported is the Radeon RX 460. With the end of Ethereum GPU mining, older cards like the RX 460 are now very cheap, often selling for between 20 to 30 euros for a working used card. But while browsing eBay, I came across someone selling 6 4GB XFX RX 460 cards as a single lot, and I won the auction with a bid of 54 euros. This worked out at 9 euros per card. They all had to be stripped down, cleaned and new thermal paste applied and a couple of them also had dodgy fans, but they did all work. I kept two cards for myself, gave one to a friend and resold the other three making back the money I'd spent. But before I could use the GPU in my Hackintosh there were a couple of problems. First, the XFX RX 460 is one of the only RX 460s made that needs 6 pin power. Almost every other RX 460 takes all the power it needs from the PCI Express slot. My Fujitsu P420 comes with a proprietary power supply and no 6 pin power connectors. But what I did have was SATA power connectors, so I picked up a SATA to 6 pin power adapter from Amazon for just over 5 euros. I wouldn't recommend using these with more power hungry cards since the SATA connector is only designed to handle 54 watts maximum, but since the RX 460's TDP is only 75 watts and it's going to be getting nearly all of that from the PCI Express slot anyway, this is actually the ideal use case scenario for one of these adapters. After plugging one end of the adapter into the SATA power connector from the PSU and the other end into the card it worked perfectly. Now the second problem is that the XFX RX 460 cards don't actually work in macOS. A BIOS communication issue prevents macOS from even booting, it just stalls halfway. I was able to solve this by booting into Windows and force flashing the BIOS on the card with the BIOS from a Gigabyte RX 460. After flashing the card the problem was fixed and macOS was able to boot. This brought the total cost of this system to 59 euros, which is about 63 US dollars or 51 UK pounds. With all the parts installed, it was time to prepare the USB drive that will be used to install macOS Sonoma. The first step is to download the macOS Sonoma installer from Apple's content delivery network. I posted a video a couple of weeks ago that goes through all of the steps needed to create a bootable USB to install macOS Ventura on the Fujitsu P420. The only differences in this case are obviously downloading macOS Sonoma instead of Ventura and using the iMac Pro SMBIOS definition instead of the iMac. The reason for this is that the iMac Pro has no integrated GPU and since I'll be disabling the integrated GPU in the BIOS it's important that macOS doesn't expect it to be there. 
Installation was very straightforward, and after about 20 minutes, I was into a freshly installed macOS Sonoma. Now let's take a look at the performance and see how it compares to some real Macs that are still selling for hundreds of dollars on the used market. First, in Geekbench 6, this computer scores 1143 for single core and 3461 for multi core. This is about 10% faster than the early 2020 MacBook Air with a Core i7, around the same speed as the entry level early 2019 iMac with a Core i3, and only slightly behind the 2018 Mac Mini with a Core i3. Even the cheapest of these three Macs, the Mac Mini, still sells used for between 300 to 400 euros, about five times the cost of this Hackintosh. Next, the Geekbench Metal score was 21,668. This is actually quite a bit lower than what the same GPU scores in my 10th gen build, since it's bandwidth limited here by the PCI Express 2.0 slot, but it is still enough to be over double the speed of the 2020 MacBook Air, 15% faster than the 2019 iMac, and four times the speed of the Mac Mini. Next, in Final Cut Pro, running the Bruce X5K benchmark, this Hackintosh exported the project in 37 seconds. This is nearly four times faster than the MacBook Air, three times faster than the Mac Mini, and slightly beats the iMac with its dedicated Radeon Pro 555X. In the Unigen Valley benchmark, using the Extreme HD preset, this Hackintosh managed 19 frames per second. This compares to 8 frames per second for the MacBook Air, 16 for the iMac, and 6 frames per second on the Mac Mini. Finally, for a gaming comparison, I tried Rise of the Tomb Raider. In the medium preset at 1280x800 resolution, this Hackintosh scored 50.96 frames per second. This was 3.5 times faster than the MacBook Air i7, 15% faster than the iMac i3, and 5 times faster than the Mac Mini. In this test, for comparison, I've also added my M1 MacBook Air, which managed 61.3. To come within 10 frames per second of the M1 on a computer that costs less than 60 euros is pretty impressive. Of course, the main reason for doing these upgrades was to improve the 4K video editing performance, and this is where this Hackintosh really excelled. Editing 4K video was now silky smooth, with no dropped frames during playback and skimming was perfectly smooth too, without the stuttering I'd seen when using the integrated graphics. Exports were very fast as well, using the hardware H.264 and HEVC encoders on the RX460. Definitely faster than any Intel Mac I've used. Not as fast as my M1, obviously, but really not that far behind. Apple recommends at least 1GB of VRAM for editing 4K video in Final Cut Pro, so the 4GB of dedicated GDDR5 on this card really helps a lot. Even playing with effects in real time while the 4K video played back didn't produce any noticeable lag. If you're looking for a cheap Hackintosh that can run the latest version of macOS for everyday tasks, as well as being a very capable 1080p and 4K video editing machine, then this really is phenomenal price to performance. One final thing I did was to install Windows System. Open Core automatically detects the Windows installation on the second SSD and allows you to choose between operating systems at boot time. One change I would probably have made if I didn't need the second drive for Windows would be to use the 29 euros I spent on the NVMe SSD and the adapter and spend it instead on upgrading to 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can pick up 16 gigabytes of DDR3 these days for around 29 euros, and it makes a lot of difference to overall performance in macOS, especially in memory intensive apps like Final Cut and Lightroom. So that's it for this video, if you have any questions put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. That's it for now, thanks for watching.